we now want to take a closer look at NBS. Now NBS here stands for N-bromosuccinamide, and this is its structure here. So in this lovely nitrogen bromine bond is the one we can break to generate radicals. Uh, we'll go over the mechanism a little bit later, but it, suffice to say, I just want to kind of show what's going on here. Uh, and in this case, it turns out the hydrogen we're going to abstract is going to be from the allylic carbon because we can form a resonant stabilized radical. So a more stable radical than some of the ones we've seen in many cases. So in forming that resonant stabilized radical, where the radical is, that's where the bromine is ultimately going to end up here. So we can explain why that's our product. Now, in the first example here, our two radical resonant structures are totally equivalent in every respect. And whether you add the bromine to this carbon or this carbon, it's going to lead you to the same product either way. But that is not always the case. And so oftentimes we get an unexpected product, at least initially it's unexpected. Uh, and we'll take a look at why this is. So in this case, uh, we've got an allylic carbon right here and right here, but they're totally equivalent. And so as a result, we're going to form a resonant stabilized radical, and there's one of the resonant structures. The other resonant structure here would be this guy. And because that radical is actually being shared in two different locations, we have the chance of actually getting two different products. So if the radical adds, uh, I'm sorry, if the bromine adds where the radical is shared in this location, then we'll add the bromine there. And if the radical adds in the other location, then we'll add the bromine there. And in this case, we formed a chiral center. The first one's not a chiral center, it's just that one product. But in this case, we formed a chiral center, so we'd also have to show R and S. So it turns out, if you form a chiral center in these free radical halogenation reactions, you can form both. The radical itself, uh, the intermediate, is sp2 hybridized, and therefore trigonal planar and flat, and the bromine that adds could add to either side. And so here we get these three products, with the bromine in principle adding the two others. And this one, students don't usually have trouble predicting. It's these other two. So but when you're using NBS and doing allylic bromination, I highly recommend you draw out both resonant structures for your radical to see if there's any, uh, at least initially, unexpected products. Now, if we take a look at benzylic bromination with NBS, uh, this idea of having to worry about resonance is not the biggest deal in the world. Now, we can still form a resonant stabilized radical in this case, this guy right here, and this would actually have a bunch of resonant structures. So, but it turns out we don't actually have to worry about too much about the other resonant structures. We can draw them out and stuff like that, but the big thing is that you're only going to get this product. If you look at all the radicals, and we can draw, you know, the first one here. So, one of the radicals you'd look at here would look like so. But you'd never have to ever, 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 ever worry about the bromine ending up right there because you'd end up with a product that is no longer aromatic. So it turns out aromaticity of the benzene ring here takes precedent, and so you're always going to end up with only the substitution happening on that benzylic carbon. That way you still have an aromatic product. So it's just the fact that the aromatic product is so much lower in energy that makes it thermodynamically favorable. So even though there is resonance stabilizing here, this benzylic radical, you don't have to worry about any of the resonance structures like we did with allylic bromine here and coming up with some maybe some uh, not so likely products, uh, at least not so likely that we didn't uh, predict them. Not a problem to worry about here with benzylic bromination. So now we're going to take a look at the mechanism involving NBS. And before we get started on the mechanism proper, there's one thing I do want to show here. So when NBS here reacts with a molecule of HBr, and HBr is one of the intermediates in this reaction, when it does, you can form this molecule of Br2. Notice we're just going to take this bromine and this bromine, and the nitrogen is going to bond to the hydrogen. So we're not going to ever show you the mechanism of this step and stuff like that. And it's not super complicated or anything. Uh, but the big thing here is that we will form this molecule of Br2. So, and as a result, we're going to have a low concentration of Br2 in our solution at any given point in time. And because it's so small, this is why we get to avoid the addition reaction with Br2, because there's never a lot there, and all of it's going to react with the radicals instead, or at least almost all of it. So this is how we avoid that. So, but you might be like, Chad, we never added Br2. Where's the molecule of Br2 coming from later on in the mechanism? Uh, well, here's where it's coming from. We form some of that Br2 right here in this reaction. So again, I won't show this as part of my mechanism, um, but notice when I just draw a molecule of Br2 out of nowhere in the mechanism, this is where it came from. Let's take a closer look at that mechanism. All right, so here we've got our molecule of NBS, and bromosuccinamide And here I'm going to hit it with light, but again, we can use light, heat, uh, or some sort of radical chain initiator, uh, like a peroxide. 
Uh, and in this case, we use just the right energy of light to result in this bond breaking homolytically. So again, one electron to both sides. And so we're going to end up with a nitrogen radical, be stabilized by resonance, but also a bromine radical. And it's that bromine radical I need. So, but this is your initiation step. So now let's proceed on to our propagations here. So now again, uh, we're gonna do our allylic bromination. So now we'll take our bromine radical and we will react it with our allylic species and do another homolytic cleavage. We're gonna abstract a hydrogen just like we've done in the past. So in this case, this bond breaks and the other electron in that bond goes back to carbon. And that's gonna leave us with an allylic radical, and then also a newly formed molecule of HBr. Cool, then this allylic radical is gonna react with a molecule of Br2. And in this case, it's gonna be a homolytic reaction again, so that one electron's gonna combine with one of the electrons in that bond to form a bond of bromine, and the other electron in that bond goes to the other bromine. So, and this is where we formed our product. We've now got the allylic bromination product. And then we're also going to form another bromine radical. So these are your propagation steps. There's where your product forms. So, and this BR radical can go back and repeat step two. So these are the two repeating steps that form your product, each sequence. Those are your propagation steps. Cool, I'm not gonna take the time to draw out all of the different termination steps that are on your handout though, but if any two radical meets, uh, two radi radicals meet, forming something that's not a radical, that's a termination step. So two bromine radicals, two carbon radicals, a carbon radical and a bromine radical, or if one of the NBS radicals happens to hit something and stuff like that, um, any two radicals meeting and forming something that's not a radical, that would be a termination step.